and you have no idea where you're going to go with it. That's quite dangerous in terms of production because what if you're one day into it or even three hours into it and you find it's not something you like. You, you have no idea where you're going with this, it, so it's getting quite chaotic, right? getting messy, going nowhere. And in that case, you just wasted three hours of your time as well as the client's time. And that's not good. So by doing this, which takes literally probably two, three minutes to sketch out, I have an idea of what is going to happen. The machine is going to light up. Here you can see it's these little pin lights. I have jars here with all these little supplies here. We have wires that's going to dangle in. There's going to be lightning going on, right? Electric shock. Some jars and some of those vacuum things you see in the 1920s labs, you know, those uh, where they vacuum a bunch of gases together and uh, those kind of machines, right? Uh, or apparatuses, I should say. A big machine that's trapped Frankenstein in. So at least I know, okay, here's, here's what the final result will sort of look like. And then turn that layer off. That's not what I'm going to use, right? Just to give yourself a general idea. And that's Photoshop PS1. So let's go back to number B. So we just looked at A. So this is B. Not much change in this one, in B. Uh, just barely. We can see if I turn off these layers. Let's turn off paint. All right. I think A is basically here. You see this is uh, part A is right here. Nothing changed from the previous one. In this one, all I did is actually just add a tiny bit. Sometimes I just add a little bit and save another version. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you. Right. The only thing I added here, just some minor, minor details. You can see I painted in some uh, initial indication of what Frankenstein will look like. Some of his face is painted in here. And this image also is very low res. If I zoom in, this is already about, I think, uh, this is 400%. 100% is very small. You can see this is actually one to one. Very small image right now. Uh, I'll res it up later. For now, just really quick. I put a blue hue over the entire image here. Just to, again, to cool it down. I want a little bit of cool lighting to contrast with the warm. A hotter pin light on the Frankenstein himself. So that way he really, really extracts out. All right. The test layer you can see is still here. That layer is not going to be used, but it's still there. The grid is still over here. All right. And that's all. That's all for B. Now let's open up C. Uh, you got that little prompt here. Let me just do it again so you can see it. That little prompt is because I'm using an older version of Photoshop. I'm using CS1, and this is done in CS4. The original was done in CS4. Um, so when you get this kind of thing, unsupported blending mode, I just usually say OK. Uh, I usually don't notice any difference at all uh, within the painting. I have no idea what Photoshop is referring to. Um, OK, so let's go here. So here is, we, there's a small skip I skipped, which is I scaled up Frankenstein. I didn't save that, unfortunately. Um, but in the original, you could, I kind of see it. He's right behind here. You can see there's another version of him behind. I thought that he wasn't prominent enough in the shot. The idea of this shot definitely, let me just get my notes out here. Okay. In any design, there's always a goal we're trying to achieve, right? It's not random. You're trying to get something out of it. And in a painting like this, let me get some nice red in here. This is definitely your high priority. Oops, make it read. All right? right here. This is what you're trying to sell to the audience, big money son. Your eye should go here. Everything over here is all secondary. All the stuff over here is to support this guy here. So in the original image, you can see his this amount of space he takes up is quite small. The original, he's about, about this size here. So I thought, you know what? That's not dominating enough. All this stuff here is going to overwhelm this little guy here. So I increased the size, so now he eats up much bigger space on the canvas, right? So all of this is his. So this will allow the human eye to go here first and get enough payoff in terms of what you're going to see, what the viewer's eyes are going to be rewarded with uh, here. Let's turn that off. We don't need these. So from here, we start painting. But before I paint, I added a bunch of textures in here, photo props. You can see how many they are. There, there are tons. You can see some of these are still raw, like this piece of wood, right? We don't need, actually need that, right? So if I just turn these on and on, you can see how many there are. There's tons of them in here. And this just comes from your reference images, how many references you have. Like this little engine thing here. I just dropped in a 1920s looking fan blade from some airplane or something like that, right? Machine parts. And these things, a lot of it actually doesn't have to match the perspective or the drawing at all. They're just teeth, they're grit, right? They're for you to grab stuff on. So as I turn these on and off, you can see just various, you can see a big piece right here, right? Various photo plates being used. Some are used for lighting, some are used for texture, some are using for details, so everywhere. But they're not blended in well. They're very obvious they are photographs, and that is something that you only want in the beginning of a painting. You don't want to leave it like this because that's quite ugly. right? It looks like a very bad Photoshop copy and paste job here. But you can see wires running into Frankenstein. There's our Art Nouveau parts here. Some of the wood is put into place. Yeah, But this does help go to the next stage, which is the 
painting stage. You can see some of the stuff here makes no sense. You see that? That's actually a bunch of houses. I don't know if you can see that clearly. It's a bunch of European, I think Denmark or somewhere around that, those kind of houses you see uh, in Europe, right? And But look where it's at. It's in a place that should be a machinery because I want that for the density. I want it for the parts. I don't really care what the actual content of that is. And that's how I did in this layer on, on this Photoshop file. It just add these um, textures. Next, let's open up. I think we're on D now. Are we on D? I think we're on D. So you can see here's what we imported in from the previous image. Yeah, nothing's changed. And now we bring up Frankenstein's lighting even more. Some more atmosphere fog to separate out the major parts. We got some serious parts, uh, not serious, major parts here, which is the Frankenstein and the machine. Those two things are our main selling point, the Frankenstein being number one. Um, and also when you're designing something like this, I'll just talk about shot design real quick, right? These are just atmosphere fog. You see as I turn these on and off, what happens? Yeah, nothing really major. You have to think if this is done for a cinematic, for a film, or a game, or whatever you're doing, where the players comes here, right? At any angle, it's very good to tell story. You have this dark on light play, right? He's a darker character, this dark stuff on a light background. So if my camera is shooting from anywhere, it's very easy to pop them out. And also for storytelling wise, it's quite good because we have something like a set here, some uh, jars and things like that. So if we were to put the camera and shoot it this way, say we have a scientist actor right here, you have a shot that looks quite good for storytelling because in a shot like this, you have say the scientist right here, right, working over his bench, which is right here. And then you have Frankenstein sort of, uh, you probably just see his chest in this case, right, and his leg, those straps. Right? So we could tell stories like, oh, the audience knows exactly where they are in this room. These design elements here are all clues or cues to tell the audience where they are situated in your set. Because right? remember, Hollywood games, whatever they're doing, it's a giant illusion. And if you don't create the illusion correctly, you're going to lose the audience. Right? So you have to think about where you're putting the sets. How is the camera going to be used? What kind of story are you trying to tell here? If you just design a set purely as if this is real, if I'm going to do this as a real thing, and disregard the fact that it's being used for entertainment purposes, or being used for a uh, game or a film where uh, camera angle is very important, then you might get shots that doesn't work. And they're going to go back and retweak your sets and stuff like that, right? Um, so in any case, that's what this layer did. And here I'm introducing a black and white layer. This is set on saturation. It's just a layer that's black, uh, filled with black, and set on saturation. And you can see here by doing this, I could check the values. Especially if you shrink it down, you can see the overall lighting is already in place. So let's get rid of this one. So we're on E now. E is going to be the bigger files now. E and D is when I start scaling this stuff up. You can see now this is 25%. To get to 100, we are now here. You can see. So much higher res than previously. And this is the step we take. You can see if I start getting rid of all this stuff here. So this is the previous image as was, right? Imported it. And now we start painting. And all that was done on one layer, as you can see here, boom. So we start blending the things together and start putting in cool design elements. For example, all these little jars here. So we start putting in notes, right? The, the scientist probably makes all sorts of little corrections to his design. Uh, it's got these experimental things. Wires are running in and out, this um, generator thing. Right? So I turn this on and off, you can see how much we're adding here. Uh, additional uh, machinery behind this generator wires and even how the, he hung the wires sort of makes sense so maybe he you know to run a wire here he needs to have a little nail so that way it does dangle onto his jars so the wires go to this nail and then that continue and then go into Frankenstein right let's see what this layer did here nothing really on this layer so this is just the, that's the vacuum machine I was talking about earlier so here we threw in a few more textures like that looks like jars even though these are these are metal things they look good enough to be jars so I use those to paint uh, a few more textures, such as this panel, right? One of those dials, which look really cool. They, they look, they look period piece. Basically, they'll they'll match the look of this type of technology. Here, I painted a base plate for another one of these panels. You can see I saw there's a base plate, and then putting one of those, and then the rest of this is again painting. And you can see those little houses are now being covered up. Yeah, you can still really see them if you zoom in. But if you pull back out, you can see they just look like stuff. Looks like parts. Looks like machinery, right? So this is one of those vacuum extraction things, you know, where they put gases in and the gas would then uh, form, uh, or they put liquid from the gas and then that will extract the different compounds out. So that's what this thing is. 